<laughs> ah, hi friends, it's Papa Dale here. Again, we are going to continue our pursuit of the topical series, Christ versus Culture, consisting of literally hundreds of interesting topical comparisons about the culture of Christ and the culture of the culture of the world. And, uh, you know, 1 John 2.15 says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. And so it's important to make sure that Christ is the highest priority in your life. Not your dog, not your kids, not your job, not your wife. Christ has to be the highest priority. Doesn't mean that you can't love and value those other things. You can but Christ has to be the highest priority. So where did this uh, information come from? Well, these are topics that I've written on over time um, and have published other places. And now the Holy Spirit has led, I believe, me to place these on YouTube to be a uh, body of content that Christians can use to be edified in the teaching and the doctrine of the Lord Jesus and also after the rapture of the church, the people that are left behind could also use it. Well, who am I? I'm Papa Dale. I'm a retired pastor, teacher, theologian, chaplain, evangelist, done a lot of things in over 50 years of ministry uh, for the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you want to know more about me, intro to Papa Dale, video number zero on any of my Bible related playlists will uh, give you uh, a synopsis of my education and my Christian service and so forth. The most important thing about it, however, is you need to make sure that the people that are teaching you anything about the Bible uh, are being consistent with what the Bible actually says, not that they have gone out and about and found some kind of convoluted explanation to sustain their own pet belief, pet doctrine, and throw some Bible in there too. That's not it. We are supposed to conform our views to what the Bible says, not believe what we believe and then find the Bible passages that support that. So anyway, that's, uh, that's what the Bible says we are to do, and so that's what I try to do. Now, the uh, topic for today is Holidays to celebrate God, the feasts of the Lord. Uh, Yahweh in Leviticus 23, 1 through 2, um, gave to Israel particular holidays that they should keep um, to the Lord, that they should celebrate the Lord on these holidays. It's kind of like uh, Independence Day or Thanksgiving Day. We have holidays that uh, we get together on and we celebrate on. This is the same thing that Yahweh gave to the Jewish nation. So let's let's learn about that a little, just a little bit. Put your thinking cap on now. Uh, this is not uh, Sunday school material. This is uh, serious Bible teaching. Quote, the Lord said, excuse me, end quote. <laughs> Start over here. The Lord said to Moses, quote, Give the following instructions to the people of Israel. These are the Lord's appointed festivals, which you are to proclaim as official days for holy assembly. Leviticus 23, 4 through 16. The feasts of the Lord are celebrations begun by Yahweh the Creator to commemorate and celebrate events that are important to Him. Like we celebrate American Independence Day or Thanksgiving Day, it's a time for Jews for rejoicing, family meals, love, and celebration. These holidays remember and celebrate events in the relationship between God and men. They are also harbingers of events to come, in which God will introduce and identify himself as Yeshua HaMashiach, the Lord Jesus Christ. Yahweh gave, gave seven of these holidays, also called Moedim, to
to Moses, intending that they should be memorialized and celebrated every year by the people who love God. They are, these holidays are, Passover, Unleavened Bread, First Fruits, Pentecost, Trumpets, Atonement, and Tabernacles. Each one has a specific meaning, a specific event in the plan of God. Yahweh instructs that they should be celebrated every year forever. But what do they signify? The Hebrew Feasts of the Lord, also known as the Jewish Festivals, or Biblical Feasts, hold significant historical and spiritual meaning for the Jewish people. Each feast has its own unique significance and purpose. Excuse my itchy nose there. Number one, Passover or Pesach. This day honors the memory of the day that God rescued the Hebrew people from slavery from the most powerful nation in that time, Egypt. After nine supernatural plagues had pressured Egypt to let the Hebrew people go free, and nine refusals by the Pharaoh, God released the angel of death on the land. For the Egyptian pharaohs had murdered the firstborn children of Israel as a main means of maintaining population control over their slaves. God turned it around and sent his angel of death to supernaturally kill all Egyptian firstborn in one night. The Hebrews were told to put the blood of a lamb on the doorposts of their home to show the angel of death that Hebrews lived there and he would then harmlessly pass over this home. This resulted in the Hebrews being protected from death and being released from slavery. The killing of a lamb to use its blood to protect the Hebrews was the spiritual foreshadow to protect that Yeshua, Jesus, God in flesh, would one day shed his blood for his people on the exact same anniversary of this event. In this act, Jesus would forgive sin and protect his people from death. Jesus fulfilled this prediction on the cross. Number two, second holiday, the holiday of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, Chag HaMatzat. This holiday immediately follows Passover. The Hebrew people were told by God that after being released from slavery to escape Egypt quickly, there would not be enough time for the bread they baked and ate each day to be leavened, for the, the bread to rise from flat bread to normal bread. This holiday commemorates the haste of the Israelites' departure. This holiday spiritualizes the meaning of the event. Leaven becomes a symbol for sin, and unleavened bread, the sign that leaven had been removed from the believers' homes and persons. Jesus fulfilled this by taking the sin of the world to the grave with him, destroying it and burying it. Holiday or feast day number three, first fruits, Yaham Bikurim. This holiday celebrates the first fruits of the barley harvest and is a thanksgiving offering to God. Every harvest has some fruit that ripens early. This holiday celebrates the resurrection of the Lord Jesus as the harbinger for the resurrection from the dead believers, because Jesus was the first fruits of our resurrection. He rose before we. He rose early. The Bible instructs that the first fruits holiday must take place on the first Sunday after Passover. That is the exact day that Jesus rose from the dead as the first fruits of the resurrection from the dead of all believers. Number four, holiday number four, the Feast of Weeks, Shavuot, also known as Pentecost. 
This holiday is celebrated exactly 50 days after Passover. It marks the giving of the Torah on Mount Sinai and celebrates the wheat harvest. This is the only holiday in which leaven was allowed in their bread. Because leaven was also a symbol for the Gentile people, the Holy Spirit was poured out on believers on this holiday. And so with his power in filling the faithful, the Holy Spirit inaugurated a process that took the gospel to the Gentile nations. These four holidays were given in homage to important events in the relationship of God with man. In addition, they were harbingers, foreshadow predictions of events that Jesus, the Messiah, would physically fulfill. All four holidays, all four feast days, all four harbingers were fulfilled by him. It seems reasonable to think that the last three holidays of the seven will be physically fulfilled by the Lord. Number five, the Feast of Trumpets, or Rosh Hashanah, or Yom Teruah. This holiday is the Jewish New Year. It's a time of repentance, self-reflection, and a call to prepare for the upcoming Day of Atonement in 10 days and tabernacles in 15 days. It is celebrated in part by a blowing teruah of the traditional ram's horn trumpet, the shofar. The horn is blown a hundred times with a final long blast to officially close the celebration. That blast is known as the Great Blast, Tekia Gedola, or Last Trump. See the video Feast of Trumpets on this playlist. Many Jews have speculated that this is the day when one day the Messiah will come. Many Christians have speculated that it will be the day when on one day the Lord Jesus Christ will come again to catch away his church before the start of the tribulation. Not the second coming, but simply an appearance in the air. This may be the last trump mentioned by the Apostle Paul in discussing the rapture of the church in 1 Corinthians 15.52. Number 6. The Atonement, Yom Kippur. This is a solemn day of fasting and repentance, seeking forgiveness from God for sins committed throughout the year. It was the most solemn day for all of the Israelite feasts and festivals, occurring once a year on the tenth day of Tishri, the seventh month of the Hebrew calendar. On that day, the high priest was to perform elaborate rituals to atone for the sins of the people, not the least of which was the sprinkling of blood of the sacrificial goat on the Ark of the Covenant, symbolizing the sprinkling of Christ's blood. This day is seen by many Christians as the day when full atonement is actualized. It is also seen by many as the day when Jesus physically returns to the earth. This is the second coming at the Mount of Olives to officially claim ownership of the earth and to destroy his enemies. Tabernacles, number seven. The Feast of Tabernacles, Sukkot, Sukkot, celebrates the Israelites' journey through the wilderness, dwelling with Yahweh and being led by him. They dwelt in temporary shelters back then and so make temporary shelters, sukkahs, today to remember that time, and God's provision, and Yahweh's protection. It is a two-week-long festival filled with great joy and celebration in homage to God dwelling with men. It was during this feast that Jesus said, quote, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water, end quote. 
Many Christians believe the final prophetic fulfillment of this celebration will be the coming down from heaven of the New Jerusalem to begin the millennium and to be the headquarters of Jesus at that time for the next thousand years. Each feast day has both historical and spiritual significance. Each is observed with specific rituals and traditions, celebrating, feasting, loving one another, and preserving the Jewish identity and fostering a sense of unity and faith. So this is my teaching and my comments on the holidays that God gave the Jews to celebrate in honor of him. This is also, uh, these holidays are also harbingers of uh, the activities of Christ as he brings about the full, complete redemption of mankind from sin. And uh, each holiday represents uh, a specific event in the life of Christ. Passover, his death, first fruits, his resurrection, or his burial, or excuse me, uh, uh, unleavened bread, his burial, first fruits, his resurrection, and um, Pentecost, his giving of the Holy Spirit. He did fulfill each of these feasts physically and in actuality. They weren't just spiritually fulfilled, they were actually physically in real time, uh, fulfilled uh, physically and personally by him. There's no reason to believe that the final three feasts of the Feast of the Lord will be any different. That the Feast of Trumpets will announce his the resurrection of the faithful dead in Christ and the rapture of the faithful living in Christ to be with him the uh, atonement, which would be the uh, complete and final forgiveness of sin, and the uh, Feast of Tabernacles, which will um, be the uh, um, celebration of his actual physical uh, retaking of ownership of the earth, his establishment of the uh, kingdom of God on the earth, and uh, physically and in actuality. And so those are my, my last thoughts, my final comments on this teaching. If you have comments, questions, or prayer requests, you can leave them in the comments section below. Keep them short. If they're going to be lengthy, take it to my Facebook page. Uh, face, on Facebook, Dale Warren. Uh, the link is below. And if you have prayer requests, you can leave those below too. If you wish to look at these lesson notes more slowly, there's a link to those down below as well. Um, the Lord willing, uh, if the rapture doesn't happen, the Lord doesn't take me home, uh, my plan is to continue to publish these videos and... Um, the net topic for the next one, uh, I'm not sure because uh, the Lord always, or doesn't always, but the Lord often surprises me by giving me new topics to write about and then to uh, publish. So I will only say that they're all good, and so the next one will be good too. And uh, until that point in time when we see each other again, this is your old pal Papa Dale signing off and saying, <laughs> I will be praying for you, that you will be well and be blessed. <laughs>